Welcome to Pro Practice, your guide to piano mastery. I'm Josh Wright, and today's episode is part two of Scarbo, the third movement of Maurice Ravel's Gaspard de la Nuit, Gaspard of the Night. I shared, reluctantly, a, perf a live performance that I gave last night at the beginning of the first part uh, tutorial, part one tutorial for Scarbo. Um, just to give you guys an idea, if things don't go perfectly well, what can happen, but to always work um, as best as you can with the piano that you're given. This piano repeats better than the one last night. Does that mean I have to truck this two hours north to go? No, you have to adjust to the piano you're on. Maybe the piano's a little heavier than you're used to. Maybe it's way lighter than you're used to, um, and you've got to lighten your touch even more. With a piece like this, uh, the reason I like to preface with this is this piece challenges the piano, the pianist to the utmost degree with repetition, with acrobatics of jumping around. Practice as much as you can to perfection, but when you're in the performance, don't let a missed repeat, repeated note throw you and make you think you're a terrible pianist. We're gonna start with this. Uh, we got through bar 395 at the end of the last tutorial. We're now picking up in 396. Here we go. With that opening motive. So here, stay down in the key. I like to have some finger action, a little bit of rocking back and forth. Don't lift the key all the way up, but enough finger action to allow basically the jack inside of the whipping there. Uh, if you want to get real down in the weeds, go watch my series with Hiram Weeble, Weeble called um, Prepping a New Steinway, and there's one about jacks and resetting of jacks in there. Um, so that's what you have to use. That's the, what the physical mechanism um, is doing in the piano, that jack has to reset for each of those, which is quite um, quick. So every piano is going to be a little different. Again, I like to count nine and five. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. One, two, three, four, five. Off. Long off. I don't care. You don't have to do three plus one extra beat because of the fermata. This is mystery at this point. We have to be extremely ambiguous maybe a little less so Ravel starts to piece out with single notes so now he's darkening it with these really low bass notes maybe a little less than this one all the same concepts we shared in part one apply here okay now he does not write eighth notes here he writes dotted eighth notes these are slightly slower And I like to kind of exaggerate how slow that goes. And then here, voice the E, which will contrast really nicely with that D sharp, create a lot of uh, harmonic tension there. And I like to count 12 here. One, two, one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three, one. So four groups of three. I, I was counting off the actual beats there, but you can just think one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, and then a group of eight. One, two, and I like to do the E and then the B, just a little awareness. It's quite soft there. One, two, three, four, five, six. Oh, that was terrible. And get down on the other side of this metal piece, according to what type of piano, it might be different. Um, but in this Steinway, it cuts off the F to the E. There's a big piece of metal running through there. So I got to lean my whole body over because I like to watch the hammer rebounding. It helps me make micro adjustments, that hand-eye coordination. Once it's gone, I can relax. Four, five, six, seven, eight. Okay, now, triple piano. One, two, three, 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 four, five, one, two. Sorry, I don't know why I was counting one, two there, but one, two, three, four, five. And I apologize, our neighbors are doing some construction, so you may hear a little bit of that. The mics are so close in the piano, hopefully you're not hearing too much of that. But here we go, so. So allow that to kind of evaporate off. So I like to count one, two, 
three, four, and then we're gonna have five groups of this nine. Two, three, four, five, one, one, one. And I like to slow that down just a little. Then change. Okay, so here, keep the hand very close. And this is just like a distant bell. And then just little bells. And I like go to go to there, then less. And again, same concept that I showed you guys in part one. Keep the hand close and I like 5-4-2 in the right, 5-4-2-1 in the left. Little crescendo and diminuendo. And I am not metronomic there. Um, one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three, one. I'm approximating there. And that's, um, I think, in the spirit of this, it, because it grows and then it gets big and then it comes back down. So. And allow that to one, two, three, five, four, three, two, one, one, two, three, five, four, two, five, four, two, one there. Oh, that was terrible. And I like that to be a little splash of color, so I like to be a little bigger. And then that comes out there, so. And I make a little move in 438 like that. So diminuendo, a little move. Okay. Again, I, to I talked about in part one, if one hand's getting too fast or too slow. My left hand is too slow. So speed that up. And sure enough, my trill gets better. And again, splash of color, five, four, three, two, one, one, two, four, five, four, three, two, one, one, two, three, five, four, two, one, two, three, one, two, three, five. It's important, it's critical to keep the hand very light. So one, two, three, one, four. And I kind of flip the hand out like that, extend the fingers to grab that. Because if I stay compact, I have to suddenly make a move. So I'm actually thinking of opening the hand up as I'm leaving three. So. A lot of practice was done when I was younger smacking those in order to get that and we want maybe going to there and then diminuendo and then very soft here and you can do a real slow pedal change like that a little pedal change there Fingering, I have four, three, two, one, and then one, five, four, one, two. Rather than trying to put your thumb up on there, you can. Don't do this. <gasps> I discovered that my hands do circles on that, and now I'm playing so mushy. Don't do that. Keep the clarity. Same thing here. So it is a little bit of a circular motion, but you still keep the clarity in the fingertip. I like to crescendo. 
and start extra slow. To me, this sounds like a beat.